Hi everyone. I hope I'm coming on board all right for you all. Everyone's keeping well. Just to let everyone know, I have by default muted everyone who's joining the call automatically. If anyone has a question, obviously you can use the chat to write it in or you can unmute yourself and just shoot me a question that way as well. So either by the chat or by anything else, feel free to plug in some questions and we can get started. I think in terms of a general overview of what we had planned for today, just basically talk about everything related to, uh, there have been a lot of changes, of course, in the last few weeks. So any thoughts that you have, any questions that you have about the new setups, about the new, particularly online whiteboards, is something we've been getting a lot of questions of. We just thought this would be a good opportunity to get them all out of the way now. And yeah. Any, any thoughts, greatly appreciated. While we're waiting for our first questions to start coming in there, um, I might as well give you a brief overview of what, what our current plans are for, um, for how this online whiteboard situation is gonna work. So you will have been aware, probably most of you in the last few weeks, that BitPaper, who have traditionally provided the default service for Tutor Cruncher, linking us with an online learning space, online distance learning platform, they've started charging for their services. So they incurred a lot of costs as a result of the massive increase in usage that they faced following the lockdowns and everybody in quarantine. Um, as a result of that, that put massive pressure on their servers, increased their server costs quite a lot, and so they began charging to counteract that. In response to that ourselves, we decided to implement what we are trying to view as a marketplace for all of these different options. The ones that we have currently, so we have our own, um, video chat platform, which is kind of branded on our own. It's based on software that came over from a crowd called daily.co. It's just video called. There's no collaborative whiteboard element to it, but it's, it's video call. We will send out URLs in lesson reminders. It will be accessible from lessons for any of the students and tutors who log in and there will be a link in the bottom left hand side that along with all others are just going to be in if you go to system and settings and you have a scroll down to online integrations that's where you turn that on in that same place or so system settings and on online integrations we also have details of our other options so these are paid options for online whiteboards that we're integrating with so those paid options include at the moment, so we still have BitPaper up and running. Um, BitPaper offered the same service in many ways that they always have. I think as far as I'm aware, they're looking to increase their functionality as they're moving on to a billing model, some of which I'm sure they've already done, some of which I'm sure is yet to come. And an important thing to understand about BitPaper as well, while they are charging, while the prices that I think they still have listed on their website are aimed for individual tutors. If you speak to BitPaper themselves and you introduce yourself as a company, as an agency who work with multiple tutors, they will come to an arrangement with you for sorting out all of those tutors at once. So I'm just looking at a couple of questions which have come in through the chat here. Um, so we had a question as to whether we plan to add a whiteboard to our, I assume that's discussing our, our own video call service, what we have now by default, which is free. Um, that is not something we'll be doing in the near future. We've actually licensed that from a third party who only do video call services. 
if they decided to implement something like a, a whiteboard or collaborative workspace, we would, but there hasn't been any movement on that so far. Now, one option that has been mentioned to us a few times in the last couple of weeks are a crowd who some of you will know called Big Blue Button, who are an open source group who do that collaborative workspace in addition to the video call. Our developers are very interested and excited about an open source solution to that. So that's something they're working on, they're quite interested in, um, as well as talking to some other paid alternatives. Uh, so just having a quick check through these other questions now. So we have a question here about the data sharing policies of these video call platforms and whiteboards. Obviously, we've all heard some of the speculations about Zoom that have been going around and, and particular agencies, or organizations refusing to work with them. Tutor Cruncher ourselves aren't a great vendor of that information, specifically regards our own service, that free service, the video call one that I've been speaking about. I would imagine that we can get some information from you. I don't have information to hand about how that information is handled, how it's encrypted, where it's encrypted, that kind of thing. But I will make a note for us to publicize that information after this call. And again, as I've said to some of you on the lead up to this, this call will be recorded and be put online either in chunks or as one long experience. So we will include any follow up information with that as well. So let me just take a note here to include video call encryption data. Our next question. Oh yes, this question is asking whether our video chat will be able to use just with audio. Yes, it will. Like all, like most of the video chats would be used to, you can just turn off your camera and that's fine. And it is browser based as well. So that's come up before. There aren't any needs, any need to download anything like that. It's not like something like Zoom that we're using here today. I'm sure people will have seen Norman Wilson write in. Um, so Norman, if you're a tutor, I think it's probably best to direct those questions to the agencies that you're working with. Um, tutor Crunch ourselves, really just the software backend. So whether or not those agencies want you to log into their own account would be best directed at them, I would say, and all the best with it. And we have another question here from someone who had a BitPaper account before they started charging and whose tutors had papers saved within that. Um, now that they've started charging, their tutors seem to no longer have access to them without being set up on a paid account. And they're wondering how to get access to those. So primarily, I think this question is probably best addressed at BitPaper themselves. If I were to weigh in on it, I would imagine that, well, first of all, as far as more bit paper will do a two week free trial. So I would hope that they could get information that they needed from bit paper within those two weeks. Otherwise, I would expect that bit paper would still be able to export that data and that they would do so on request. If anyone has any conversations with them and they get a response, which they weren't expecting, we would absolutely like to hear from you um, and we can have a discussion about that with them ourselves but my understanding is they will have some mechanism for you to get that information and the video chat being recorded to keep a record of what has been said so this again i'll take that to mean our own internal video chat service does have an option or rather will have an option for video recording. 
at the moment we're trying to figure out how we implement that because it will be something that will come with a cost to us so we're the question that we're discussing internally at the moment is how we allocate that cost and as to whether we have tiers for how much content you could record like you will have experienced with a lot of the existing online whiteboard solutions or whether whether it's a flat rate whether we absorb that ourselves we'll have to forecast what the costs will be or what we expect the costs to be before before we can go ahead with that so we have another question here is this video online portal add with tutor cruncher package I, I take that to mean is the video call included within tutor cruncher it is included in its current form within your tutor cruncher subscription in the sense that it's completely free along with software and we expect it fully to stay that way as i said we might introduce charges depending on the level of less of recording of video calls that you might want to do kind of consider that separately but the service itself is free or included within your subscription if you like to think of it that way either we have a question here asking if you use a different online whiteboard instead of bit paper is it possible to connect it to tutor cruncher so it absolutely is there are a couple ways to do it you can do it yourself using what we call single sign-on integration or SSO and again that will be if you go into system and settings and go down to online integrations as well as our default ones we'll have an option to set up a custom integration and that custom integration asks you to set up a, a single sign-on integration with this external service we have a little bit on the help site so if you go to the user guide in the top right hand corner and even if you just type in the search bar there SSO you should get our guide on how to set that up it will require a key from the other service that you're using if they can give you that there will be single sign-on so you'll have a little link pop up in the bottom left hand of your screen and you will you or tutors or students will be able to follow that to that external service that you want to link with now the other way of doing it which would be more complete is if you say to us what service you want to use we have a discussion with them or they have a discussion with us and together we work at a full integration the differences between a self setup sso integration and something that tutor cruncher ourselves would build and implement would be that the lesson urls would be going out along with lesson reminders and would be accessible in each lesson on login so a student or a tutor logs in they see it in the lesson and can follow it that way and they will get a url link in the lesson reminder that goes out to them either way it will require that external service that you're using to do a little bit of work so we'll see how amenable they are to that generally speaking if they kind of have a head on their shoulders they usually pursue it quite strongly because obviously we have represented an opportunity to them and vice versa so it's a, it's a good synergy i suppose to use an overused term um so good good prospects on that if you can let us know even just in the chat box on the bottom right what service you're looking to integrate with we're happy to have a chat with them maybe mention our name to them as well and just say that you would find it valuable and we can start something out there's someone here as well oh yeah that went in to us all so that was amber just saying that bit paper had been very responsive and setting up a dialogue and responsive to different suggestions to making it work that's great to hear um, very good to know that people are having positive conversations with bitpaper and our timeline with the video chat solution so we already have our in-house video chat solution again that's system settings and online integrations if you want to have a look at that uh, i think we have just called a tutor culture video is the title we've given it in there now that 
is obviously our free solution in terms of our timeline for paid solutions. Bitpaper and the lesson space are already in there. And we're currently in conversation. We do have a, an existing integration with a crowd called Group Board, who do not show up there. It's not a full integration, but it's one of those kind of ready to go SSO. And we have connections with, with David over in that company. Um, we're looking at getting him included in that instant integration tool. And our, our developers are talking to him and his staff about how to implement that. We're also having discussions. One of the people who've been very keen with us so far, I'm sure they wouldn't mind us saying, are bramble.io. Um, so we're in conversations with them as well. And it's great to know that they're excited. And, and I mentioned big, big, big blue button already as well. They'd be open source, so it'd be exciting to see how that would work. Um, so let me see what we have as our next question here. So we have a couple of messages here that have kind of gone into the public chat. Um, ES is saying that they're not sure the analytics tab is not is working for them. If that's the case, ES would be great to know more details about it. Probably on a, a big shared call like this isn't a place to discuss it, but if you could fire into our chat with some details about, about what's not working. I know you mentioned that you have a lot of clients who receive your emails as spam. They're going into their spam box. The major reason for that is that your companies, so the domain that those emails are being sent out from, you might remember setting up an email domain verification so that when an email is sent to your clients, they come from your company domain. If your domain sent out a lot of emails to maybe addresses that don't exist or you know, to old addresses, to unused ones, anything like that, or was marked as spam for any reason. So maybe if you had sent out a lot of messages and you had users who were reporting emails as spam, then whatever email service the clients in question use, it might be Gmail or, or Outlook or whoever, might decide to start marking them as spam themselves. You can check this out. I'm not sure exactly where off the top of my head, but you can get a fairly good proxy for what your domain reputation is. I think we might be able to find that for you as well. So if you wanna pop in the chat then and ask us if we have a clue as to whether your domain reputation might be low, because if that's low, it's a strong indicator that for some reason, a lot of those unwanted emails are being sent and that that's dragging down your domain reputation and meaning that more of your important emails are going into spam as well. So that would be one thing to address and you can let us know if if that's going to be the case or if we can help with it piece just chatting about group world so i mentioned group board it's it's good they're kind of one and the same um and he's had good experiences it with it so that's always great to hear um that's great we've got some people having a think and having a look at the different whiteboards And we have some questions about demonstrating the video chat. To be honest, that's probably a good idea for future calls like this. I'm not sure if our video chat is, is perfectly suited for webinars, but um, I might not demonstrate it here if, because uh, I'd have to kind of log into some accounts and, and change some stuff around first. Um, as for this person who has had difficulty using the video chat, would you be able to let me know if there are particular, if there's something in particular that threw you? I do know when we launched that video chat earlier on, if you wanted more info about it, we were linking you to a page. We had entered the wrong URL, so it said that page didn't exist, which was quite right. That should be changed now though. So if you follow that more info link and earlier it didn't work for you, it should now work for you. Oh yeah, so we've got a question here to switch our to switch our kind of train of thought. 
about this Find a Tutor service that we're looking at rolling out. So some of you might have seen the email that we sent out, which included details about what we're doing to kind of rise to the challenge after all of this lockdown and self-isolation. And one of those included was a Find a Tutor service. So we noticed that there is actually still a demand for tutoring and people want to keep their children occupied when they can't leave the house, but that certain tutoring costs are kind of prohibitive and they're not always practical, especially for online calls for someone to pay $50, $60 per hour for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So we decided what might be helpful is if we introduced some mechanism to split the cost, not only among users within a single agency, and when I say users, so it's not only among clients within a certain agency, but across agencies as well. So it would be a fully opt-in service, of course. If one of your clients maybe expressed interest in splitting the cost of a lesson between however many other people, five other people say, and you don't have any other open slots at the moment. You don't have five other people in your agency that they could split it with or that it makes sense for them to split it with. You could essentially forward that information to us or flag it to us. What we would do is open that up to a wider group of people and look further through Tutor Country users to see who wants to learn a similar lesson. Is that a similar age bracket or grade or school year and see if anyone in any other agencies want to take that on board as well. Then everyone takes an online class together, the children are occupied, they pay a lower rate and the, the revenue is split between all of the agencies who, whose clients participated in the lesson. There's a lot of finer details to be worked out with that for sure, but we had a great response. Um, I have quite a lot of those response emails gotten back from that initial prospecting email already. So people seem to be really interested in it, which is fantastic. And we're working on that at the moment. I think the current expectation is that we get a first draft product out for that in the next week or two. Once we have that, obviously we'll follow up with more details about what's involved in it. I probably shouldn't speak too much about it on this call because I don't know where it's going to go, but it's, if you have any thoughts on it, I'd love to hear them as well. If about how you'd like it to work or um, how it would make sense to work for you, anything like that. So we have a question here asking about the online database that TC is going to build. I'm not sure what that's referring to. So obviously we have quite a few databases um, depending on how you use the term, like CRMs for individuals, or maybe the online database is actually referring to find a tutor potentially, which is that kind of tutor linking service. Um, so maybe that's been slightly addressed already in the previous question. If it hasn't, or just to further to what I said before, we were also planning on having a section on the tutorcruncher.com website where clients can go in and search for agencies which might be appropriate for them. Again, this is opt-in, of course, so you would share your information with those prospective clients. You could show them whatever information you want to show them to make the decision about whether they work with you or not and see if they click through that way. So it's just a way of funneling people through to our individual clients because tutorcruncher.com has pretty good SEO. Um, and we get a lot of traffic currently from people who are tutors or they're looking for tutoring. And so while we've traditionally viewed this almost as a burden, we realize there's actually really inherent value in a lot of that. So if we can funnel some of that value to our clients and increase the value for all of you 
by funneling those people across to you, that would, you know, all the better for us because the more successful you are, the more successful we are, of course. So, um, so that was our, and that was what prompted the idea for kind of find a tutor and, and sharing all that kind of stuff around. So we have another question here. Let me see if I just if I understand this correctly. So we have a question about the white white paper. Um, I assume that is re referring to bit paper. Um, did not understand yet this online features. Not understanding, this is a slight guess, the features that BitPaper provide, perhaps. So again, this is an evolving area. I'm more familiar with BitPaper as they existed prior to charging for their service. They are implementing a lot more features in order to kind of justify the price tag that's going along with it these days. Uh, so historically, they haven't worked with things like lesson recording. Again, uh, they may well be introducing those features I'm not sure if I understand the question or if there are any other features with them you didn't understand. Other than that, it's fairly standard on like whiteboard stuff. So collaborative workspace, video call, screen share, voice call, and a few tools like shapes and lines and, and fills. Each paper, as they call it, will have, will have different screens within it that you can switch between. You can save them as PDFs and download them or upload files onto them. So again, they'd probably be the best people to address if you have any questions about their features. I should say as well, we have quite a few questions here. So if you are writing questions at the moment, my apologies if it takes me a little while to get around to them, but we just have a bit of a backlog here at the moment. Uh, another question about Finder Tutor, which I hope we've kind of broadly addressed so far, but let me know if there's any more details about it that you'd like to hear. We have a question about whether we would consider enhancing the socket JSON output to contain more fields and why it is different from the public contractor's API output. I think, and my serious congratulations to the person who wrote in that question that has gone above my head. I acknowledge it as a question, but I think that's just something I'm gonna to have to refer to one of our people who are a bit more technical and are a bit better at answering that kind of stuff. So apologies, I can't give you a better answer for why that's the case, but you should probably hear it from an expert rather than from me. So I will make a note of your company name and I will just ask one of our techies to shoot you back an answer about that. We have a question asking whether the like marketplace is live yet. The answer essentially is yes. It's in a relatively limited form so far. We decided to launch with essentially minimum viable product and just have it add to it as we go with different options and prospects. So the marketplace is live. The instant integrations that we have live in within it currently are our own online video call service. They are BitPaper is another one. And finally, the lesson space with an optional single sign-on integration with Groupboard that doesn't display there on that screen. Um, so those three are available. You can have one of them or all three of them. And we did introduce, for those of you who missed it, a separate setting in the rest of settings. And I will just click through and see if I can find out where we introduce that, which selects what your default distance learning solution is. So where would we put that? We would put that, I suppose, into Yeah, so if you were to head to system settings and activity and just have a scroll down there. The last field is default online integration. So there you can select 
whether it's BitPaper or the lesson space or our own one, which one you want to use on your lessons by default. That will apply to all new lessons if you change it, all new jobs, I should say, that will apply to all new jobs if you change it, but it won't apply retrospectively. So if you have any jobs which are set up with another service, changing that default field won't affect them, it will only affect new ones. have a question asking, could you please tell about the privacy of the client with you, which I take to be questioned kind of generally about data security. That, and we have a few kind of standard points about that. We're fully GDPR compliant. We are the data processor, whereas you as agencies are the data controllers. In terms of the integrity of the data itself, it's all stored centrally on our Heroku servers, which are based out of Dublin and backed up on at least two other continents. And Heroku has, I can send you if you'd like a, a link to where you can see Heroku's uptime for their servers. It's 99.9998% or, or something in that, in that ballpark. If anyone does want to check the uptime of Heroku service, you can head to status.heroku.com and you can just check it out there. So where our data is as safe as Heroku stuff is, I think we were discussing in the office one day, I think we said in order for Tudor Cruncher to fail, 15 of the world's top 30 websites would have to fail as well. So it's potentially possible but if we get to that stage, we've lost more than Tudor Cruncher. So not a massive worry for most, I would think. Um, we have Stan here ask to us all, is there something that we would need to do in order to get listed? So if a good few people, and I should address this with regards to find a tutor, have asked how they opt in for it. Again, because we haven't finished the development, we haven't built that little opt-in option. I'd imagine the guys will want to put it in settings, just have a little opt-in to find a tutor. And again, I would expect within settings and within that opt-in, once you say ticked opt-in, we're going to ask you to specify what information you would like to be shared, just to make those connections easier, I suppose. Um, so they might include things like ratings or or your company details or anything like that. Um, so we have Natalie then ask how would payment work for the shared lessons? Again, Natalie, not 100% sure yet. Um, we still need to iron that out. I'd imagine it'll be ironed out as part of the development as to how we allocate the costs. I assume it will be on a, on a basis of whatever the per client cost is and who is active in the lesson. So if you have four clients from a certain agency and one from another, I imagine the money is allocated that way. To be honest, I shouldn't again speak about my station because I don't know how we're going to cross that hurdle yet. Great to hear some more positive responses to find a tutor. And find a tutor referring to. Oh yes, yeah, so someone has asked uh, on the Tutor Cruncher website currently, tutorcruncher.com, we have what we call a company directory, which is at tutorcruncher.com forward slash companies. Um, those companies are not the Find a Tutor companies. This person has asked, are they the Find a Tutor companies or just a link to all your clients? They're not a link to all our clients either. So we only list people there if they ask to be list, listed. And we will also list non-clients there if they ask to be listed as well. So there are quite a few clients on that list, on that list who aren't ours. Um, and quite, quite a few clients of ours who aren't on that list. Uh, so we operate on a principle of discretion generally. So unless one of us here asks you about using your company name publicly, we won't use your company name publicly. We kind of operate on the basis that you don't want people to know. If you do want people to know, fantastic. Um, but that list has no 
nothing but a coincidental relationship to our list of clients. So this person has asked, apart from the find a tutor option, is there, are there any new ad advances that will be introduced? So find a tutor is definitely occupying our mind at the moment, as well as those online whiteboard integrations. Those are the two big things that we've been rolling out in the last few months, or in the last few weeks rather. Um, are there any other projects that we're working on? I don't think we've come up with any serious plans for that yet. I'm sure there've been some ideas batted around, but with a situation as I'm sure you're all in the same, that is absolutely constantly evolving. I think we've really just taken what we think will cause the most benefit and, and we're doing that first and we're not, you know, just I, I'm in the same situation, we're in the same situation as all of you are that planning too far in the future almost feels a bit futile. Um, so I, that will be an evolving, an evolving field, I suppose. We'll make sure to widely publicize any new advances that we do. And we're always, you know, instituting little things that will make a difference. One of the things actually, which we were working on before all of this cropped up, which will come back into the fray, is a user interface redesign. So we kind of want to change the layout. We've noticed that a lot of the client pages or user pages in general tend to get a little long and a little hard to scroll through, a little bit indigestible. So we kind of want to break them among tabs, just make it a little bit more user friendly, I suppose. So we'll be doing a few little user redesigns. We introduced a new list view there a little while ago, which some of you might have, might have noticed. So a little few tweaks, which make the system feel a little bit less daunting and complex, but maintain all the same functionality. That will probably come back online as everything returns to normality. So we have a question there from Charn to us all. Uh, what is the general business model for a tutor contractor business? Profit margins per hour, how much is the general markup? Companies always use the placement fee model, we are in South Africa. So it really does vary quite a lot. Um, I couldn't speak to, um, profit margins per hour vary so wildly and we have people who we have people who operate 100% as charities and we have people who cater to extremely high net worth individuals. And you can imagine the difference between them is phenomenal. Tutor Cruncher, again, in relation to the data security point I raised earlier, doesn't aggregate or use your data. We don't collect any stats on it. So we don't know what, say, the average profit margin is or something like that. Obviously, we recognize that that kind of value, is, that kind of, Data is very valuable, which is also explicitly kind of why we don't want to take it or to do anything with it. Um, so I mean, that same kind of goes to the general markup on the hourly rate. With regards to placement fee model, that's not something that Tudor Cruncher has traditionally been particularly good at. Um, although, but we've actually implemented some stuff in a recent in recent times to make us more suited to that. If you're going to maintain a placement fee, fee model, it would probably be a process where you say advertise a job to tutors, you match them up and then set an ad hoc charge. Now you'll notice as of the last six months or so, when you add an ad hoc charge, there's a little checkbox down at the bottom for instant, instantly invoice the client. So your placement fee might go there. If you were to set up the job, maybe have the tutor schedule the lessons or maybe add some lessons in yourself, you could just scroll down on that job to where it says ad hoc charges, add one in, you'd be able to select from some pre-made categories that you had set up for different placement fees. I assume you have different rates and packages. And taking them in that way, you just select the category, 
it'll pre-fill an amount and a description and the client will be whatever client is on the job we'll have that little checkbox for invoice now you just press submit on that page and an invoice will get to the client that's probably the best way to do placement fees um, and then whether or not you make a markup on individual lessons after that is very much up to yourself. I have another question from Amber there. I'm wondering if you could do a Facebook page of the like where tutoring agency owners can talk. Yeah, so that's it's an interesting point. And um, this is before my time slightly, but there was, I think it was on the website, a public forum where people could contribute to conversations. It was taken off, I think, partly because it was very difficult to keep spam free. Basically, it was seen as wherever people can leave comments publicly are, you know, a great attraction to spammers and people looking to promote X, Y, Z. Um, setting with Facebook might inter intervene some of that. Um, it's definitely something we can explore. I don't. From what I have heard about the old system that was implemented, there wasn't a lot of production, productive conversation that was going on in between spam messages. Um, but I'll raise it with the team again after, after they see our demo here and see if they have any thoughts about how we could stop it from becoming like that again. Great, we have Matt saying he has had very positive experiences with the lesson space, which is great to hear as well. So I think we've had those great experiences from all our kind of main pre-integrated options, which is good to know, it makes me happy. Um, oh, and Amber has actually clarified what she was asking above. Oh, and it's, it's a little bit different, I think, than what I took it to be. Yeah, so I think the suggestion, Amber, if I'm, if I'm reading that correctly, is that we could have some kind of Facebook page for all of the clients with a chat that you could discuss with each other. That's an interesting one, like a group, I suppose, um, with requested membership, that might make sense. We have brainstormed in the past what are the best ways to build a sense of community because it would be nice to have a productive community surrounding tutor culture because obviously everyone here has so much to learn from each other that's it's a good idea actually to have a group and then an internal chat on the basis that unlike our previous forum which was open to the world on tutorculture.com this might be more controlled so that i, I do quite like that idea i'm going to um suggest that to the team And then we would have to vet, I would imagine as well, any new group member who came in and kind of tick them off maybe against existing clients accounts. So we know we're not gonna invite any, any less than desirable spammers or anything like that, Facebook group. So we have a private question here. Is it possible to have more than one integration per lesson? I used to get two buttons in the lesson page, but now it seems I can only have one. Oh, that's an interesting one because we introduced that, that default online integration per job. That is true. Um, so the reason you would have had two buttons in the past, I would suspect, is that we had BitPaper as the default free integration, which we just always left around because it was free and why not have it? And then you have that ex external integration, which was also popping up there as well. Now, sis, since BitPaper has started to charge, we don't do the whole, oh, well, they're free, why not have it thing? So we have set it to be one per, per lesson. But it's an interesting point if we can, might be an idea 
and run it by the developers to see if they would add something like a a second second preference online learning solution um, into those jobs or just the option to add all might be might be suitable for you. Two whiteboards per lesson. And on that note, these people have asked us this as well. Specifically, usually in regards to bid paper, because they work off a price based on papers. But when we create that little bit paper link that shows up, or we send out a link to bit paper in emails, in those less reminder emails, to show the student and the tutor to join the class, that doesn't itself create the paper. So that itself won't charge you. It's only when people follow that and they set up their, their conference, like we have here, that it will count to bit paper as a paper. So if it's not used, you won't be charged for it. People, that question has come up a couple of times, just wanted to clarify. Um, so we have a question here in private. What list are you talking about that we can be on it? Um, so I'm not sure, it was probably in relation to find a tutor. So that is, that was as well as linking companies together or splitting tutoring between companies. We were suggesting to have somewhere on tutorcruncher.com. Again, this is fully opt-in, which would, for all of the clients looking for tutoring services who come to tutorcruncher.com, that they could click in to our find a tutor page and have a look at the different agencies who use us, who've decided to advertise themselves as there and have a read through the ones who are most appropriate to them. Um, maybe listed based on whatever subjects they're looking for or some criteria that if someone has decided on, I'm not aware of yet. So that would be one list. I could have also been speaking about the company directory, which is our existing one that doesn't correspond to our list of users. It's just, it's, I suppose, our previous approach to something like Find a Tutor, which is just a list of loads of tutoring companies, which we were hoping individuals could log on to or browse through and see which ones match them. But we kind of wanted to have a, something a little bit more sophisticated, I suppose. So you could view Find a Tutor as a more sophisticated version of the company directory, a little bit more interactive, a little bit more intelligent and not applying to companies that aren't tutor cruncher clients. We have a request there um, for someone to be added to the company directory. We absolutely can. And we can send you out some fields to fill in regards with regards to the company directory. You just give us some information about yourself. I think it is like name and website and a few other things like that. With regards to the company directory generally though, I'm not sure actually what happens to it in the wake of Find a Tutor as to whether it hangs around or whether Find a Tutor becomes a replacement to it or just an addition to it. If the if it looks as though Find a Tutor will replace the company directory, then it's probably not a great deal of point sticking your company details in there now. But if it is going to hang around, I will either myself or I'll ask one of my colleagues to just shoot you a message with the fields that we'd like some information on. So I think, yeah, so what I was saying, it was just the name and the website, phone number, a little bit of a bio or blurb about yourself. Um, I think we have traditionally asked people in what year they were founded. Not always necessarily possibly relevant, but um, that kind of thing. An address as well, I think we traditionally included. Um, so yeah, we can send that out to you or even if you just want to shoot that information across to us. On the basis that we will continue to have a company directory, we will add you to the company directory. So just take a note of that. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got Amber there. Oh, that's just a, a message to the general group from Amber. Um, Welcome to connect up and start a bit of a community, which is nice to see. Um, so we have a question in private about kind of a product demonstration on how the the website works. I, I assume there you're talking about the back end website, so like the Tutor Cruncher software. We can arrange calls and, and talk about more specific questions about how it will work. Usually if you're looking for a good overview of the software, a good place to that for that would be to go to tutorcruncher.com forward slash help. Help has all of our documentation on it. If you're just starting out, what might be useful is if you scroll to the bottom of that page, there is an hour long product demonstration. It's a bit daunting obviously, but it does run through pretty much all the day to day usage that you'll come across. There'll be finer details with regards to settings and, and maybe some financial stuff that you might want to speak to us about. That's absolutely fine. Or you can see covered in more detail in the documentation further up the page. But the hour long product demo will just go through all of kind of standard usage stuff. So that would be a good general purpose place to go if you're looking to learn about it. And if you have any specific questions, First thing to do might be type them into our search bar in, in on that help site that I mentioned. Second thing to do is if you can't find it in the help site, just write into our little intercom chat in the bottom right hand side. So we have a question here, uh, a private question come in. Oh, that's, that's very, um, interesting and complimentary. So we have someone wondering if they would be able to invest in the company crowdfunding or anything like that. Um, very flattered to you. Um, so we don't have, we haven't been going mad for any investors or, or crowdfunding so far. Um, absolutely chuffed that you think we'd be a safe bet. I'll definitely tell the guys about it. We have your name here, of course. Um, I wouldn't hold your breath, I would imagine, but delighted that you, that you think we'd be a safe pair of hands. So, um, yeah, I'll shoot you a message back. And if, if not us, maybe we can brainstorm what your other priorities are. Um, So we have a question, a private question here asking, do those online integrations only work on planned lessons? So they have a block of planned lessons. There's no balance, so I'm not sure what that means in that context. It doesn't work for us unless the client is paid in advance, which they should, but sometimes they don't. How does that work? So, so only work on planned lessons. We have a block of planned lessons with no balance. So what I'm reading from this, and maybe I'm completely wrong, is that well, one, one interpretation of it, I suppose, would be that you have planned lessons and you don't want the link to be associated with them until the client prepays, perhaps. It's a bit of a shot in the dark. If that's the case, we don't currently have a we don't have a way of allocating prepayments really, or a way of saying that we don't show the lesson link unless it is prepaid. It's an interesting point. Um, I would imagine maybe because it's if you used BitPaper as an example of somewhere that might charge per paper. It's an interesting point. I think I'll probably have to explore a little bit further offline um, and just think through the use case for it. If you can provide any detail, details or if I've completely misinterpreted that question, which is very likely, um, greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I might just have to have a think about offline what the use case would be there and how 
we could or how, how we, might, we might want to gauge as that. Yeah, so we have a question here also in private about adding Zoom as an integration. So this is a popular one, obviously. We're on Zoom at the moment. Um, it's kind of the, the tool of the hour. The way Zoom work is a little bit strange though. So we could integrate with them, but the integration won't be like the others. It won't be single sign-on. Zoom don't seem to allow that or, or make it easy or work with us in that way. So what it would be is it would, it would almost really be more like a link. So you click the link, it would bring you to Zoom and then it would ask you to sign in. That is kind of object, objectively not really as useful as something like what we currently have, which is you click the link, you go to the lesson. There are more steps in between. I realize that people like Zoom, people know how it works, and it's desirable in that sense. But so no movement on that so far. Might be an idea whether in the chat here or in our external, our kind of standard chat, if you wanted to stick in whether or not you'd be in favor of a Zoom integration, even if it only meant that it's a link, um, you can absolutely let us know. That would be interesting. And if it's overwhelming, obviously we'll try to cater to that. But if there's not a great deal of, of interest in, in just having an, a kind of a link to Zoom there, um, we probably won't pursue that much further. So we have a question again in private. If all of our tutors can teach every class offered, is there a way for clients to book single lessons based on session topic? Uh, in brackets, not who the tutor is. Uh, so there is, there are a couple of ways of doing it as well. The first one would be within internal to the tutor cruncher backend on the job, on any particular job in question that you wanted clients to be able to book into. If you could select from the label, if you could choose the label public job and apply it to that job, then you will want to, then once that happens, when a client logs in and they go to a, a bookable lessons calendar, I think we call it, they go in there and they'll see the lessons that appear within that job on that bookable lessons calendar they can select one of them and they can se select that they want to attend it or that they want their child to attend it. The other way of doing it would be through your website. So you might have heard us throw around the phrase shooter cruncher socket. So that socket is kind of like, it's just like our, our suite of website plugins and integrations. One of those, that you can check all of these out on dinotutors.com, which is D-I-N-O, so dino is in dinosaur, tutors.com. And one of those is for appointment booking. So if you are on, or if you want to go to dinotutors.com, and if you go into a bit up at the top where it says socket examples, you click onto socket examples, and the first option there will say appointment booking example. That is our website integration for clients to book lessons through you. So if on your website, you want to have clients log on and book individual lessons, that's, that code is what you copy across. You just copy that code across within your tutor cruncher site, we'll give you a little string of numbers that you copy into it to make it personal to you. And that's, that's really the crux of it. You might have to, make sure you enter your website and things like that in domains. Our help site is probably the best place to double check that stuff before you go and implement it, but it shouldn't, shouldn't be too time consuming to implement that on your website either. So we have a question. This is in to all of us here from Charn. Um, 
how do you solve the problem with kids doing written worksheets in an online tutoring space? We work with youngsters who need to use a pen and physically write on a sheet of paper. How do you, as a tutor, mark check their mark slash check their work in the most productive way online? So some agencies or yeah, definitely some some tutors, but then agencies as well, I'm sure as some agencies themselves like to use tablets. Tablets are compatible with a lot of the online whiteboards. So can be a little bit easier for kids to get used to, especially if, if they have a stylus or something, you know, actually writing down on what feels like a sheet of paper. If you have, if the clients have access to them and you're using one of those online whiteboards, then happy days. Yeah. An alternative to that might be so file sharing, again, if you're using an online whiteboard, files can be uploaded and shared. So even if they wanted, if the client could scan a document or take a picture of a document for that to be marked or checked. Screen share would be one as well. Again, that's not necessarily pen and paper unless it was brought in that direction. Are there any other productive ways that, that might be done? I think those are probably a, the only ones that are coming to me off the top of my head. Maybe what might be useful, and I'm sure you all have more expertise in this than I do, is if any of the agencies in on the call here today want to chip in on the chat and say what they found useful for students who are very attached to pen and paper. If there's any mechanisms that you found to make it easier for tutors to mark their work or check their work, whether you're using an online whiteboard solution or video calls or whatever it might be. So we have a question here, which I'm not sure if it came in before or after we spoke about this the last time, um, asking if Find a Tutor is going to replace the existing company directory, and if not, they would want to be on it as well. That is fine. I will take your name there, Private Asker. And yeah, if it does still exist, we'll stick you on it as well. That's no problem. If you could just send over what I mentioned to the last company who expressed interest in it. Um, so that was company name, website, a bit of a bio about yourself, phone number, and address, please. You don't strictly have to include all of those things. Some people don't want to make their phone number public. Some people don't want to make their address public if they're strictly online. But as many as you can do will make your profile look a little bit more filled out, a little bit more attractive. And um, we have a question here again in the private chat asking if classes can be booked with a tutor without the admin approving it first. Yes, they can be. So that would be the mechanism discussed beforehand. So you have the job, you set it as public job. After you do that, all bets are off slightly. Any client can log in and they can book themselves into it. The admin doesn't have to approve that going ahead. Um, unless maybe, uh, improving it first. Yeah, so yeah, that would be the way to do that. That's, that would probably be the best workflow. Oh, interesting question. Okay, so again, a private one here. Would Tutor Cruncher support online payments from clients who are based in Macau and China? Now, Macau specifically, I am not great on, but I'm just going to kind of roll them into mainland China. And so excuse any potential ignorance as to differences from Macau. With regards to China generally, so obviously we currently have this the Stripe integration, which is set up at the moment that takes all cards or so debit and credit card. As part of that, we accept union pay payments. Union pay run the vast majority of all cards in China. So anyone who is paying with debit and credit card from China is almost certainly going to be able to use union pay in order to do that. There are alternatives that we have explored to make it easier again. One of those alternatives is 
Stripe have a way that they can take payment from WeChat Pay and Alipay, which WeChat obviously and, and Alibaba also massively popular in China. Um, Stripe take payment from these using a kind of a Q QR code scanner that, that is very in very common use over there. That's Stripe do allow for that, but Tutor Cruncher currently don't. That's one of Stripe features, one of Stripe's features that we haven't currently completely integrated. Now we have explored that and we have looked at implementing it. It's not on our high priorities list, especially in the wake of everything that's happened in the last little while, but it is on our priorities list. Left to our own devices, we, we will implement it. We have had discussions with individual organizations about paying for the development of that option. There are some people who are interested in contributing money to the support costs or to the development costs rather for implementing WeChat Pay and Alipay. If there are others here today who are interested in that, it would be great if you want to send in a private chat your name or just externally to send your name. The more people we know who express a strong interest in it, the faster we're likely to implement that. So anyone who has strong opinions about or just strong support for us implementing those features, absolutely love to hear from you. Okay, so we have a question now here in private chat. And I should say as well that we do have quite a few questions built up there. So I hope to get to everyone, I aim to get to everyone. There may be a few people who submitted questions in the last few minutes who I don't quite get around to within the next 53 minutes or so. If that's the case, I'm sorry, but I'll try and be a little bit more efficient with how I go through these. So this person is asking a question about the prospect pipeline and how that works. The prospect pipeline is uh, kind of defaulting to my product de demonstration description of it. It is a fully amendable workflow for whatever your current sales workflow is. I'll, I'll phrase it like that. So if you have a current sales workflow or if you have an imagined sales workflow that says, you know, the first, first time we hear from, an, from a prospective client, we call them a new fish or something. And they go into the new fish category on our pipeline. And then we have a process that we work with them from there. So we say, say we give them a phone call and after we have a phone call with them, we move them on to the next stage of the pipeline. And after that phone call, we have a, an induction screening video call with them. And after that screening call, we move them to another stage in the pipeline. And then we match them with the tutor and then we send them our, their first invoice. And once they've paid that, we consider them live. The pipeline is just our tool to recreate that for you within Tutor Country. So if you were to go to system settings, I think it's just called pipeline in there, you should be able to go in, you can edit what those stages represent and how many of them there are. So you could follow a pipeline that's just like what I said, a load of different companies will have a load of different pipelines depending on what their sales process is. And obviously you can find the one that best suits you. That's, that's really what it is. It's, we try to make it a very flexible tool and and maybe it would be beneficial if we update some of our documentation to make that a little clearer about how to use it. But yeah, so I mean, flexibility is really the, the core tenet of that. I know a lot of people tend to, especially when they haven't thought about sales pipelines, stick with our, I think we say, initial contact, tutor matched, and I can't think of what the third one is. That's fine if you want to stick with them. Just it's generally helpful if you have a process in mind about how, how a client progresses from one stage to the other. 
We have Amber in the chat there responding to the earlier suggestion that someone invest in or crowdfund tutor culture saying that um, we can invest in our company. So that hopefully a nice plug for you there, Amber. Our tutors. Oh yeah, okay. So some clarification to an earlier question, which I was a little bit confused about, was that tutors can't plan a lesson unless there is balance on a client's account. That is true. I think that's actually kind of an optional thing, but um, in more ways than one. So there is a setting on Tutor Cruncher called Prevent Negative Balance. And that it prevents a lesson from going ahead unless the client has positive balance on their account. This is for people who don't want to invoice in arrears, who always want to receive prepayment from the client before the lesson goes ahead. Now, in the case that you want the whiteboard for the planned lesson, but you can't plan that in advance until the client is prepaid, first of all, when we show that message to tutors who are trying to plan a lesson, there is an option presented to them to go ahead and schedule it anyway. So they can ignore the fact that the client has negative balance, schedule the lesson anyway. We then just won't allow them to mark it as complete. It's probably likely the case that your tutors go to plan a lesson, see, that, see a pop-up saying the client has negative balance, are you sure you want to go ahead with this? You probably shouldn't be. And then they say, well, no, I'm not going to plan a lesson in that case, which is understandable. You can also just turn off that setting. So where can you turn off that setting for that negative balance? I think that is a company wide setting. So let me just double check this. But I think if you go to system and settings, and client balances. There is an option in there for prevent negative balances. So I suppose in your case there, the two options would be either to insist that clients don't get a lesson link unless they prepay for the lessons, which would be one way of doing it, or to turn off prevent negative balances, which would show tutors which would make it easy for tutors to schedule those planned lessons and not put them off. But it would potentially mean that your clients are having lessons but they're having prepaid for them. So it's a bit of a balancing act there, I suppose. Um, and we have a question from Olivia then in public. Don't I... Oh yeah, I think that's just further to the question that we were just discussing there. And I do apologize to people who 20 minutes ago wrote me nice clarification messages about the message that I was looking at 20 minutes ago. I'm just afraid to scroll too far up and down in this chat because then I'll never find my place again, basically. So I'm very much shaking them one by one. If I, I'm not, getting the relevant information when you're sending it to me, I do apologize. Um, but I'm probably better off not to lose my place. Client has not paid and they can't book a lesson. How they create a whiteboard. I think again, that's for further Olivia to the point that I was discussing just a moment ago. Alex is very interested in a Zoom integration, which is one for Zoom, um, good to know. We have Janet ask us all in the Zapier link on February 14th. Blog doesn't lead to an invite as stated. Oh, right, okay, so we must have released a blog on Valentine's Day, which mentioned a link to Zapier um, and then didn't include that link. Thank you for that note, Janet. We'll definitely get straight on that. So, Feb 14th, blog no Zapier. Just to very briefly touch on Zapier. Zapier is, it's actually a very useful thing to know about. It's an integration 
forum, you might call it. So Zapier go around all these top brand software products and they ask them to set up an account with them. They have over 2000 big software providers that they work with. Their software providers all link up their API endpoints of Zapier, which are kind of like their, and their endpoints for giving external information. So giving information out of their systems and receiving information back into them, kind of like their, their shop front, I suppose. So Zapier links in with all of them and connects them together. So if an individual user, if a company, um, Janet such as yourself, wanted to link Chooser Cruncher with their Gmail or their HubSpot or their MailChimp or whatever it might be, they could use Zapier to be the go-between. So let's say you have a process where if a client is created on Tutor Cruncher, a little notification goes from Tutor Cruncher into Zapier. You've set up a rule in Zapier that whenever a client, whenever they receive information that a client has been created in Tutor Cruncher, they go tell HubSpot to set up a profile for them. So then Zapier go tell HubSpot to set up a client profile. And there are loads of different ways of doing that. You can even do it so that something that happens within Tutor Cruncher can trigger something else to happen within Tutor Cruncher. So a possible future adaption for it, although we need to make the API endpoints available, would be something like client gets created, we create a task for that client to follow up after two weeks or whatever it might be. So a good few options there with what to do with it. Um, at the moment, because we haven't achieved a kind of a critical mass of users, Tutor Cruncher users who have signed on and started using Zapier, we're still in invite only. But the more of you that set up their accounts, set up accounts with them, then the more people who, and Zapier will kind of recognize, recognize us as a brand that they want to advertise publicly and we won't need the invite anymore. With regards to Janet's question, I have made a note and we're gonna stick that invite link in our blog from February 14th. And so, we have another follow-up about that Facebook group, which would act as a kind of forum between Tutor Country users. So that's good to know about. Um, yeah, so I think to you, Private Oscar, who is mentioning that, happy to discuss it personally. I think we have the, the foundations of the idea. Um, if there are any further points that we might want to run by or clarify with you, though, we absolutely will. We have Private Asker here asking, will you be integrating video conferencing, file sharing for live lessons that can be offered online via the TC platform? So video conferencing, that's one that we've already done. So Private Asker, if you were to head to system and settings and online integrations, there is a Tutor Cruncher video set up there, which would do the video conferencing. And that would go out, the URL would go out in less reminder emails. And the URL would also be accessible for anyone who logged in and was looking at that lesson. With regards to file sharing, we do a document sharing service on Tutor Cruncher at the moment. So if you wanted to upload documents that are available either to that you want to make available either to specific people or to groups of people like all of your clients or all of your tutors. Then you could head to activity on the left hand side of your screen there in that menu and documents within that. And upload documents there and share them on that basis. I'm not sure if that's the kind of functionality that you're looking for out of file sharing, but it's definitely one way of doing it. Um, whether or not that's relevant to live lessons, I don't know. Most of the online whiteboards that integrate do a kind of a live file sharing. So if you want it between tutors and students, um, our video conferencing tool doesn't do that. So that's, again, because of the third party, it's, it's not something that we necessarily would be implementing. 
but it's something that we can explore and that we can request from them. And definitely all of the paid solutions do have a kind of a live file sharing option. We have a question to us all there from owner. How does the iCal work and how difficult is it for young tutors to implement? So iCal is generally pretty straightforward. It depends a little bit on what calendar you're using, whether it's Gmail or Apple or Outlook or whatever else, but it is generally pretty straightforward. And we have those little guides that come up whenever you click the iCal button. For those not familiar with iCal, what it is is you go into the calendar there's a little button at the top for iCal that will show you a URL. And what you do is um, some help docs about how to use that. What you want to do if you're a tutor or an admin or a client or anyone else, just copy that URL. And as per the docs, go into the settings on say your Google Calendar and add that URL that we give you in there. I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm actually slightly amazed that we haven't had more questions about it, but hopefully that just speaks to the fact that it is relatively easy to do and relatively well explained. And even if our docs aren't as clear as they could be for you, if you type that into Google, iCal, Gmail calendar, or iCal, iCal Apple calendar, you should find their, their docs as well, which describe how to implement it. So we have a message here in the private chat. Okay, yes, yeah, so we have a number of tutors that can teach in multiple locations. There does not appear to be a field for including a secondary location in a tutor's profile. So like a daytime versus a nighttime address. So giving the tutor is second allocated location and our current location filters do only pick one postcode or zip code. We would absolutely consider including a secondary location. It's, I, I'm pretty sure that's in our list of possible development features, possible upcoming development features at the moment. There needs to be a little bit of thought done, I suppose, as to how that gets implemented and how we choose between the two or under what circumstances we go to the second location. You know, so you use the example there of daytime versus nighttime, like a central business district versus the suburbs. That we just, I imagine, need to have some kind of intelligent criteria to switch between the two. Um, so I guess maybe you'd either search for people's first locations or you'd search for their second locations if they were uniform as to what they represented. I think it's, it's definitely a prospect. It's in the pipeline. It's probably not massively high priority, but I can check in on that again and see if there's been any movement since it last came up. And once we are thinking about it, we'll just have to work out a few logistic issues as to how that works practically, I suppose. And then we have, oh, okay. I thought we had more questions than that. That is fine. I think I've basically caught up with myself. Um, that is great to know. So we have Alex here asking us all a few minutes ago, do you have, or will you have a training video on how to use your video conferencing and file sharing that we can re reply to our tutors? That is a very good idea, Alex. Um, we don't currently have video training on how to use our video conferencing, but that is probably something that makes sense for us to do in the near future. I guess this has all been a bit new, so um, we've been trying to adapt to it quickly enough. But yeah, that's, that's a completely fair point, and I can understand it. That would be very handy. It might make sense for us then as well, on the basis of the fact that you say that this is for your tutors. I mentioned earlier the call if you're around for it the tutors have a tutor guide. So when they click on user guide in the top right hand corner, they get taken to a tutor guide, which just shows them stuff specific to them. So how to add lessons and, and add their bank details and that kind of thing. 
So as well as us adding it in the general admin help guide, I think it would make sense for us to add a little guide in there as well as to how to use our video conferencing system. I think that makes perfect sense. Um, and file sharing, yeah, we can include that in there as well. From the user's perspective, file sharing will mostly probably be intuitive in the sense that we'll just have a little section that says documents with an upload option. And it doesn't really do anything more than that. So an individual tutor, say, wouldn't have a lot of options to share files with individual users and certainly not with you know, all of the company's clients or anything like that. Um, so that one might be a little bit more straightforward. We can still include that in their documentation though, if that's helpful. And yeah, we'll definitely get on that video for, well, for video conference and training, I suppose. Video, for, video conference training. For tutors. No worries on the icon explanation, but that seemed to have made sense. Oh, someone asking here, it's a very important question. Could we contact you later if we have doubt or difficulty in understanding things? If yes, then how can we contact? Please let us know. The best way to contact us, generally speaking, is in the little blue chat icon that will pop up whenever you log in on Tutor Cruncher. So it has a little message symbol on it. You just click that and you come through to our chat box. One of our support agents, possibly myself or, or one of the others, will shoot you back a message. That's really the best way to do it. If you, I understand that as you work through these things, questions will pop up. As they pop up, just fire them in there, should be absolutely fine. Uh, so yeah, completely understand if, I'm obviously saying things very quickly and I have the benefit of not going into the weeds on particular issues, but any further clarification, that's the best place to get it. We have another question as to how can new hires securely upload their ID for HR purposes? <coughs> HR purposes, I should say. I get into trouble in the office sometimes when there was an office for mispronouncing that letter. I still think R is what Byron say, but um, with regards uploading, tutors uploading their IDs or any other supporting documents for HR purposes or for any other purposes, um, they will have a little section on their dashboard when they log in that says documents and also a little panel on the left-hand side. You'll be able to see this yourself if you're signed in on Tutor Cruncher. Up on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll have your initials or a picture of yourself and a little circle. If you click on that, and then under Change Role, you'll see where it says Tutor. You can change, change yourself to seeing Tutor Cruncher through the eyes of a tutor. You'll see all this stuff as well. So when a tutor is creating their account, They'll have a little documents tab. They can click add there, either on the left hand side or on their like main dashboard, and they can upload their IDs or anything else. One way, if you wanted to prompt your tutors to add those documents, would be with what we call a roll page banner, um, which is kind of a very old part of Tutor Cruncher. If you wanted to turn them on, you could go to within your admin login. So you're back up on the right hand side. Just go back to change role admin administrator and then go into system and settings and down to role page banners. It's just a very simple way of sticking a notification up to your tutors or your clients or whoever about 
some information that you want access to or a notification or whatever it might be. So maybe you have a roll page banner and you'll see that there are multiple options there depending on who you want to display it to. So one of them will be for tutors and you can just select whether it's active or inactive. And you might ask tutors, don't forget to upload your ID in the documents tab below. And we also want your background check verification and whatever else you might require from them. So that would probably be the way to get that information. Okay, so we've got another question here about our website building service, which is an interesting one. So Tutor Cruncher do occasionally build websites for interested parties. Usually people who are setting up tutoring companies for the first time, they want to just kind of get everything out of the way in the one breath. And they generally speaking, you know, are, are pretty happy with us with regards website design. So they're happy to go with us. It's not so much a consultative one in that we don't, we don't generally build websites to spec, but we have a standard model that we offer people, which covers most people's needs and, and usually looks pretty slick if we get the color, if we get this color, color scheme from you and it all looks good. Um, this person saying there's nowhere to book a consultation and looking to connect to someone to chat through the proposal. Again, I would say, Private Asker, if you were to use that on the tutorcountry.com where you saw us mention that we build websites, again, you'll just have that little chat box in the bottom right-hand side. It'll be blue with a little white message icon in it. If you could just fire in there and say what kind of website you're interested in, what the purpose is, and we should get you a quote for it. If you could be as detailed as possible, what we will, generally speaking, respond with is saying that they are based off a standard model. Um, one example to use is dinotutors.com, which is one example. It's a little cartoony, so it's not to everyone taste, everyone's tastes, but it mostly shows off the functionality that one of the websites that we built has. If you also want to check out another live example, one, um, one, man who we built a website for, who has very kindly let us use his name when discussing our portfolio, um, is rathe.g.com. So that's R-A-T-H-E-G.com. And that's another website that we built for him. Um, you can get in touch, again, you, you'll be getting in touch anyway through that chat, I'm sure. So if you do that, then maybe you have some more examples or you give us your thoughts about those other websites. The main things that we look for for people for whom we're building websites are to get their color scheme and their logo are really the most important thing. If you have any thoughts about font or other style, kind of other kind of general style issues, that's a place to air them as well. It's great to get that known about early on. So looking forward to talking to you about that. Um, so we have a question that's probably for a little bit of time. And then almost caught up with myself here. Um, last one is a follow up question to the ID upload. Is that the same document folder they will use to share documents with students? Or is that done through lessons? So that document upload folder, it's, yeah, Tutor Cruncher has one document sharing system, I suppose. That isn't well suited to tutors sharing directly with students. So tutors don't have the option to share a particular file with particular people. That's down to admins. Now, if you wanted to say, let's say you took use the example of a background check or something else. And maybe you want to share that with your clients for them to vest the tutor independently after their match with them or something like that. Then you could, within your system, you could go into that 
the document that that tutor uploaded, click into it, and you could grant access to that document to the client. So you say, oh, tutor uploaded his background check verification. I click in, grant an access permission for that same document to the client. Now they can see it, they can all vet it. If you are thinking more about on a lesson by lesson basis, which is obviously more common, as to who, maybe the tutor wants to share class information, so content for classes, that probably isn't the place to do it because an admin would have to be active in sharing that information. As you say, that would probably be done through the lessons themselves uh, rather than through the Tutor Hunter document system. So if you're using our free option, which is which is that video conferencing system, we don't have the document share. If you're using one of our paid options, pretty sure they uniformly do, maybe with different, different stipulations from each one. And yeah, so that would probably be the way to do it. If it's individual lesson content, probably through an online whiteboard. If it is more kind of conceptual big picture stuff that you want to decide who sees and who doesn't, yeah, you've got that, that's great. Uh, you just use our, our document storage. Okay, I am, as I thought I would, wouldn't be, completely caught up with myself. So if anyone does have some more questions to fire in, absolutely work away. Um, I've got another 20, 25 minutes here. And we have a question there from Kyoko into us all. Can I use a whiteboard for an interview with a prospective tutor? Absolutely, you can. Nothing to stop you using that at all. Um, and I suppose it might make sense in that case to use the tutor culture default video call integration because you probably don't need whiteboard functions or like a collaborative workspace for that, unless you want to like administer a, a, an entrance test or exam or something as, as you may want to do. But yeah, absolutely you can use it for that. Something that we've seen a few of our clients do is set up a job specifically for tutor interviews. It's just a way to get them in the calendar and to get a lesson URL for them. So if you want to set up a special job that's not like your other jobs that your actual clients won't be listed on for tutor interviews, you can click into that. Whenever an interview comes up, you just schedule it what, like you would schedule a lesson. And that will give you the URL to use, and it will mean that it's in the calendar, so it's it's a, it's less easy to forget about it. We have a private question there. If you accidentally mark an invoice paid, what is the best way to undo it? So good question, and a few things to talk about that. So first of all, if you mark an invoice as paid. The, well, the only way really to cancel that out is to, I think we, the button that we have listed there on the invoice. So if you go into your raised invoices, into the invoice that you marked as paid incorrectly, once you click into it, you'll have a button up at the top of that page saying issue credit note. So once you click issue credit note, it marks the invoice invalid. Now, I should say, whenever you're voiding paid invoices, you'll have to pay attention to the client's balance. Because when you take payment on an invoice, we record that as topping up the client's account appropriately. So if you were to raise another invoice, and that let's say you, that initial invoice, you didn't actually take payment on it. It was pure accident. You would have to adjust the client's balance before that next invoice goes out, or it will be slightly out of kilter. Because we'll work on the basis that you did actually receive payment, but for some other reason, you're canceling the invoice. Maybe a particular charge was incorrect or something. So 
that's the basis on which we work. If you want to edit the client's balance back down and say that, no, I actually didn't receive any payment of that at all. If you can go into the client's account, just click on their name on the invoice, it will bring you to their profile page. There you'll have an option up at the top to adjust balance. You click into adjust balance. You can put a negative amount to whatever the amount of the invoice that you said was paid. So let's say the invoice is $100 to keep it easy. You can put in negative, so like minus 100. When you're putting that in, it will ask you for a method. The method to select when you're putting a negative one is balance correction. And then you can reissue stuff. That's if you didn't actually receive the payment. If you did receive the payment and you just needed to change a lesson cost or maybe add another item to it or anything like that, or just edit any of the lessons that have been included on that invoice, then you can just void it, make the edits you need and reissue it. When you reissue it, if you've got automatically marked invoices as paid turned on, that is in system settings, accounting and general. If you've got that setting turned on, it will just be marked off against a positive credit automatically. And then whatever is outstanding, maybe if you allotted an extra charge onto the invoice, that will still be outstanding and they'll be asked to pay it. If you haven't got that setting turned on, then you can go into the raised invoice that will currently be marked as unpaid or pending. And if it's pending, you can cancel the deferred payment and pay with credit will be the button once you click into the invoice at the top that you're looking for. And using that, you can write off the credit that will be on their account. So that, that's what to do if they have actually paid and you want to recognize that fact and write it off against the new invoice that you raise subsequently. So I think we've got a couple of questions here in the last few moments. Oh yeah, okay, popular question. And honestly, one that people in the office struggle with sometimes as well. So um, an hour and 45 minutes in here, you might, you might have me on thin ice, but I'll do my best. Um, please explain the difference between invoice balance and available balance, and how do I change an invoice balance? So let me get this straight in my own head. The available balance covers everything, basically. So when a prepayment is made, it tops up the available balance. When a lesson is taken, it reduces it. So let's, let's take Joe Bloggs. He prepays $100 and then he has a $20 lesson. His available balance is now $80 because he's gone up 100 from the prepayment and he's gone down 20 from the lesson. Invoice balance is different in that it doesn't care about lessons or anything that happens progressively on the account. So in that case, Joe Bloggs, he prepaid $100, invoice balance goes up $100. He takes a $20 lesson, invoice balance doesn't change. It doesn't care about lessons, so it stays at $100. And as he takes his second $20 lesson, his third $20 lesson, his available balance has gone down to $40 now, but his invoice balance hasn't changed. His available balance will take account of lessons and the invoice one won't. Now, you regenerate your invoices and you send a draft invoice to, you send an invoice to Joe Bloggs, you draft your invoice, send a raised invoice to Joe Bloggs for $60 for all of those lessons he's already taken. Once the invoice is issued, his invoice balance decreases accordingly. So prepaid 100, all these individual lessons happened, didn't change anything, but when you actually invoiced for those lessons, his invoice balance decreased accordingly. If you want to specifically increase a balance, the best thing to do for that would just be to go into the client's account and go to 
adjust balance, as I mentioned before, obviously you can put in a positive figure in there as well. And that will increase, it's like increasing the amount of prepayment that's been made. So that will, that will increase both. Um, I appreciate it is a little bit confusing to have two balances. It is unfortunately necessary um, as much as the developers tried not to wade into all that confusing accounting stuff, I don't think they could really avoid it, unfortunately. Um, if you do want to hide, as has come up with some clients, if you, if you don't want client, if you don't want your end clients to see, either, usually people don't want them to see the invoice balance, they want them to see their available balances. Available balance is often the balance that people think of when they think of their account balance. Um, whereas invoice balance is a different, more accounting related item. So if you wanted to hide either of them, but usually invoice balance, you could go into system and settings and custom CSS. So custom CSS will let you hide elements on a page. So if you wanted to get rid, if you want to log in to your client's account and you want to see where it says invoice balance, just right click that, inspect the element. It will give you a little CSS class or ID for what that represents. Just copy that, go back into your admin view, go into system settings, custom CSS, and then using CSS, if you know a bit yourself or you know someone who does, it's a fairly simple thing to say, this is what I want to hide. So you cut paste in that ID or class that you got from, from your client login and you say display equals hidden. It's not quite that, but it's along those lines and, and straightforward enough. Um, so that can be a way to avoid confusion from clients who don't know the difference between the two. We have a question here in private as well. Can you pay tutors a set base pay per class? And I'll answer that first question first. Can you pay tutors a set base pay per class? So we have a setting per job for clients to pay kind of a set base pay per class. Um, we call that, I think, added fee per lesson, and fee per lesson, yeah, that sounds about right. That's for clients pay, not for tutors pay, for clients cost, I suppose, rather than tutors pay. We have another field, which is the default student premium. And the student premium is extra hourly, extra pay to the tutor, depending on whether you've selected hourly or per lesson pay, it will be that that it will increase. But I'll take the example of hourly. So extra hourly pay, extra per hour pay to the tutor of say $2.50 for every student who attends the lesson. So if you've got a, a lesson with five students and each one of them is paying, if each one of them has a student premium of $2.50, then in addition to whatever you've entered above for the default tutor rate, that will increase by $50 per hour because, or by $12.50 per hour because it's five students and the $2.50 each. Um, so those are two options, but that's so not, maybe directly if you're doing one-on-one -on -one classes, um, if you're mostly doing one-on-one -on -one classes, as the majority of our users probably are, then maybe you just set a student premium of whatever amount to add to that. It'd be interesting to know the use case there. Maybe that's something that's, that's easier to be discussed in a less public setting. And then we have a second question in that same message. Can add pay per hour, how many students attend class, how many classes they teach in a month, sliding scale. If they teach X number of classes, we will increase the current month pay by amount. We do not have something which would increase a tutor's pay on a sliding scale based on how many lessons they've taught per month. 
Is that something maybe that could be done through Zapier? Yes, may I think so. I'd have to think, work out the logistics of that in my head. It's not a setting that we have, but I think it might be possible to, if you set up an account at Zapier, to get that information through Zapier and for you to say in Zapier, if Tudor X has done more than 30 hours, change their default pay to $50 per hour. If they've done more than 40 hours, change their pay to $55 per hour. Um, so yeah, I think that actually is possible. I, I think it is. I should double check with our tech guys as to the API endpoints that are available for that. Um, yeah, I think that's probably, it's probably just what I'll have to do on that front. On that note, if people don't know, and people often don't about something that we have called tutor and or student default pay. If you were to go into system and settings and where exactly is this is in people no, default. Yeah, so system is settings, and then as we went to before, accounting settings and general. You see there are two options there. One is for default tutor rates and one is for default student rates. So if you turn them on, if you enable them, if you tick the box beside them, you will be able to set a rate that a particular student pays or that a particular tutor gets paid that is unique to them that will override the default on any job they're assigned to. So let's say if your nephew signs up to your tutoring company and you say, listen, we'll charge a cost price, don't worry about it. You might want to add them to whatever jobs you see fit but lower it to a standard cost price rate or something, whatever job they're added to. If that's the case, you can turn that on in settings, in system settings, accounting settings in general, and turn on default student rates, go in to your nephew's account, edit it, and scroll down to accounting settings, expand that, and add in what you want them to pay by default. It will override any default settings on the job, but it can be adjusted. So let's say you got your nephew, you added them to the job, they're getting their special cost price rate, but you say, actually, this guy's more expensive, or for whatever reason, you've used up your good karma with me. Um, so you go back to normal price, you can edit their charge rate on that job, to override, you can give them a custom charge rate which overrides their, their personal default one. And it works the same way for tutors. So you can assign a tutor, maybe if they are eminently qualified, they get like a higher pay rate. So you can turn it on in system settings, accounting settings, general, default tutor rates, go into the tutor's profile, edit it, and then under accounting settings, you'll see default tutor rate there, so you can add that in and that will override the default on whatever job they're assigned to, but you can override it yourself on the job or on a particular lesson if you see fit in the future. So that largely covers, a lot of people like to run their agencies that way as well. If you want the tutors, if you want to even add a field to the tutor's profile for them to say what they want to be paid per hour. Some people have done that with custom fields, the system settings, custom fields. I will talk about it more, but I know we have a few questions and only five minutes left. So I um, want to head into some stuff. If you want to set up those kind of fields for tutors, so just go into our user guide in the top right hand side and type custom fields into the search bar there. You should get um, quite a few results. Can I document and track client payments if they pay us with a personal check? Uh, so one, the way to record them would be against the invoice. You would um, take manual payment. You would click the button for take manual payment. Now, we had a discussion with someone recently who wanted to record 
check numbers and I think maybe even upload a scan of a check or a file, uh, or maybe a picture file of the check that it was paid with. And I don't know where that went. It's not something that we currently have, but I think it was something that we are interested in exploring after that response came through. So I will have a check in with our techies to see how that went. And we have, ooh. okay, we have a few more questions. I'll try to fire through these just so we get you all in time. Um, we are able to add subjects. However, we are not able to amend slash add the categories of these subjects. That is true. Um, this person has nicely pointed out that they're nitpicking, but I appreciate finer details. Obviously, always important. Um, for alignment, local curriculums of TC consider allowing such flexibility. So we have encountered custom subject category. We have had requests for custom subject categories before. We haven't implemented it, mostly because they don't have a massive practical effect, especially on end users. End users don't actually see categories all that much. They just affect where, how subjects are grouped in that dropdown. So we haven't grouped them alphabetically. We've grouped them by category. Um, and what we've done so far has been to add in individual categories that people have requested. So there have been a few categories that have come to that are coming to my mind at the moment that we can add into that list of custom categories. Once we do that, it's for everyone. If we were to add custom subject categories, yeah, it would just it would just change how those how those categories work. It is a suggestion that has been put to the developers before. I can double check with them as to where they're at with that or you know when that would be implemented if it were to be in, implemented. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head how that request is currently being dealt with. So we have a private question here. Can you talk about adding a Google ad tracking cross conversion code for the inquiry thank you page that's hosted on Tutor Cruncher? So those inquiry pages, if you're thinking of the inquiry forms that are listed on your site, so those sockets or those plugins, um, they aren't hosted on Tutor Cruncher, but we do have a section on the help site for linking Tutor Cruncher with Google Analytics or Google, is it Google Analytics or Google Ads specifically? I'm not sure particularly which. Um, but I tell you what, if you were to go to the user guide in the top right, you should see some information about, about those analytics and about linking them. I'm not sure off the top of my head, to be honest. I'm actually quite surprised that we very rarely get questions about that. Um, but Hopefully that means that our user guide is relatively thorough in discussing how you link tutor culture with analytics or, or anything like that. Thank you very much, Amber, for the appreciation of the webinar. And I'm great to hear that it's been very useful. Um, oh, on a question about how I'm personally doing during the whole thing, that's, I'm very flattered. Um, I thankfully, I mean, as have we all at Tudor Country been very lucky in this whole thing as to how it's panned out. Software, of course, not particularly adversely affected. And we are in a unique position to work from home, which we're all very fortunate for. And plus, there haven't been any personal stories with, you know, all of the negative things that could be, could be happening at the moment. I hope that you're all the same and, and Amber especially. I hope you let us know if you're keeping well. Obviously, with customer facing, and a lot of you previously would have been face to face tutoring, that must have been a massive impact. I have to say, I can't imagine. I've had conversations with, with different users, of course, over the last few weeks, have been extremely busy with the number of people setting up online. And the change in priorities and the change in workflow, I, I can't imagine how difficult it was to adjust to. So 
I hope things like this will help. Obviously, Amber seems to have enjoyed and gotten something from it, which is fantastic. Um, and I hope you're all the same, of course. If there's any other way, we'll probably be doing more of these. This one seems to have been quite successful. Um, so if there's any other way that we can be more helpful in the future, absolutely let us know, or topics maybe that you'd like to see covered in any upcoming webinars. And now I'll try to get through just the last couple um, before we all log off. Um, so we have a private message, can tutors find their own last minute sub for a class? Can the new tutor book this online? So I'm not sure if I'm understanding correctly there, Oh, a last minute sub, so yeah, so a last minute substitute teacher for the class. Um, we don't have any function whereby tutors could see other tutors who work within the same agency. A lot of the features within Tutor Cruncher, excuse me, are built around preventing poaching because in online as well as off face-to-face -face, as, as well as everything else, poaching is of course, a massive issue in the industry as a whole. Um, and so something like that might be a little bit difficult to implement um, with regard to seeing other tutors' def details. Maybe a solution would look a little bit more like if you wanted a tutor to be able to anonymously notify all other tutors that an opportunity has come up with an individual with an individual lesson that's in the near future so maybe it could look something like an automated email that says lesson happening at 7 p.m tonight i'm anonymous tutor is suddenly un unavailable to attend and we advertise that to a wider group of your tutors to say is there anyone else who wants to step in for this that's, that might be a very clever idea. I will have a chat about the people who I'd be asking to implement it anyway, so they, they probably have a better understanding of how much of a pain that would be or how little of one. Um, but it does sound like there'd be a good functionality. So as with all these things, if anyone has um, a, a strong desire to see them implemented as well, absolutely let us know. Oh, Amber, so with regards to checking my team and get back to you. So I get everyone's name. So I've gotten your name and everything popping up on the chat. Um, how are we going to do that? I suppose probably through the in-app chat is usually the easiest way. So it will just pop up for you on your login whenever we have a message to go out to you. Yeah, so I, I think that's, that's probably the case. Maybe there is an argument as well. We do currently have a log, what we call a change log, for all of the updates that we make to Tutor Cruncher. So specifically, I'm thinking with regards to all of the requests for features that we've had today. We do currently have a change log so that we know if, which details, doesn't detail, which mentions all of the changes that we've made as we make them. And we do try to include those in blogs as well every now and again, just to give an update on how everything's going. Maybe there's a way that we can be a little bit more obvious about that, or maybe there's a way that we can publicize that a little bit more when we do make a change or when we're going to make a change. We haven't made our development pipeline public up until this point. Um, I'm sure there are some kind of practical reasons to that as well. But with regards to any specific questions that we, you have, we obviously have a recording of this demo or this webinar rather. Um, we have your, your individual names, um, so we'll be able to follow up with you through that. Great to hear another point that they found this very useful and productive which is fantastic and hopes to continue running them, which is great. I think based on the reaction, I don't think we have any reason to stop running them. All right. Looking forward to the upcoming developments. Great to hear. Thank you very much. Um, about the video recording of this. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to release it long form. It has been a little bit rambling, so maybe that's the easiest way to do it. Or we might split it up section by section. Um, either way, it will be uploaded 
definitely on our YouTube page and probably also somewhere in our help docs, maybe if we set up a, an FAQ page or something like that. Great, okay, I think that is everything. No worries, Amber, I don't think you're on the call anymore about that last thing that was sent through. Um, great, I think that is us, folks. I hope that has been helpful and a bit informative. I think we got great traction, especially considering how relatively late this was announced. Uh, so we do want to give kind of a bit more notice before the next one. But I hope you all got some good use out of it. I am probably going to drink uh, a tea and hot lemon and honey um, to save me losing my voice. And I suppose I might see a lot of you in the next webinar and hopefully quite a few more. So all the best. Stay safe and healthy in these very difficult times. And I'm sure we'll be chatting to you soon. Do let us know if you have any more questions, whether they arose from this or otherwise, and we will be chatting to you as those kind of features get developed. All the best, guys. You're very, very welcome. Cheers, and I'll talk to you soon. All the best. Bye-bye.